Listen for the word of God from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 13 through chapter 4, verse 3, and then verses 7 through 8a. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and self-ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflict. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasure. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Here ends the lesson. And I also want to share a lesson from Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 33rd verse. Then Jesus and the disciples came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about along the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Today is a day to pause and remember. To remember the saints who are no longer physically with us, but to remember all that we were able to accomplish while they were with us, and what we can still accomplish with their spiritual help as we move forward. We are living through a very difficult time in Western Christianity. The church in America is struggling. That's not news. That's all over the place. We've heard it for years. But this congregation is in much better shape than most. We are even in good shape. We are in good shape because we have children. The, the children that we had just a few minutes ago up here, there's a lot of congregations that don't have that. We have children and we have good programming, appropriate programming for them. We also have youth. We have youth who've grown up here and now want to be involved. They want to be active 
in serving others. And we have adults who give of their time, their talents, and their money so that we can be first in caring. And that's what makes the difference. Right now, we are in a campaign for the Lancaster County Council of Churches Food Hub, where we're trying to raise $10,000 by hopefully the end of this year. We've, we've been vague on that cutoff date, but, but hopefully by the end of December, we will have raised $10,000. Actually, I think we're going to exceed it because we are a giving congregation. Last, or this past summer, our, our focus was on the, our Seeds of Hope garden where we gave thousands of pounds of food away to those who are hungry. And the children led us in a project to donate to Heifer International where we gave over $1,500 to Heifer so that people around the world can have the means to feed themselves and feed others. Last year and the year before that, we've been involved in giving money and supplies to the people in Honduras through the, through the Central American relief effort. We are focused on the needs of other people, and we're trying to meet those needs. That means we're following Jesus' model. We're trying to be first in caring, remembering that we are to be a servant to all. People are noticing that. We have more people visiting. We have our, our income has increased over the same period from same period up to September 30th of last year and this year till September 30th, we are ahead in our pew giving by six, almost $6,000. People are noticing that we are, we are a generous congregation. God wants us to be generous, to give away what we have. And we've been living that. Last November, we made... We took a leap of faith and made a decision to call an associate pastor to work with our youth so that they can continue in their faith development and, and grow. And two weeks ago, we had one service and the highest attendance that we've had in years for a single service, for a combined service like that, of 286 people. A few years ago, we changed the bylaws to read to, um, because 100 for a quorum was becoming hard to meet. We had 197 people vote on that. And Reverend Giffen got a 97% affirmation that she was the person called to come here and help us grow and, and attract more youth, young adults, and other people. To help them understand how our faith changes us. How we are better for that. Now her, her position comes at a monetary cost. And we need to own that reality. But we are living in a time when so much of our culture is divided between if you do not agree with me, then you are the enemy. And you are meant to be knocked down, defeated. We, we are pitting one against another. And yet, as Christians, we are called to come together, to work with each other. We have that, that first part of the being a servant to all. The second part of what Jesus said was 
Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. That's talking about embracing all people. Recognizing that we're never all going to agree on anything. But we work together. We come together and we talk through our differences. Not like we're seeing in the media with the violence. Our teenagers definitely do not understand how to work through differences. Because we've had more college shootings this year than ever. It's the quick answer. If you don't agree with me, then I'm going to eliminate you. Well, no, that's not the answer. That's not how we're to live as Christians. We're supposed to figure out how we do this together because the reality is we need each other. We need each other to live the life that God calls us to. And so we have a choice as Christians. We can choose not to live that way. We can choose to reach out to those who may be different from us, to include those who may walk in our doors and welcome them wholeheartedly. One of the the new members that we received last week came here because they went to a few other churches and not one person talked to them. And then they walked in here and everybody talked to them. That's good news, folks. That's good news. We're supposed to be people of hospitality. We're supposed to be welcoming of all people. There's guests in here right now. (laughs) Please don't let them leave here without saying good morning to them. Don't, Don't make a liar out of me. Okay? We are we are called to be that. We are called to be welcoming people. Let's fulfill that. Let's work to that. Let's work. To be first in caring and first in welcoming and hospitality. First in generosity. Because we can change the world one person at a time. Amen.